I wonder if you can access this uh, URL. If not, then uh, so be it. We can live without. But that would be nice. Yeah, it's working. Yeah. You got this picture. Oh, ah, that's cool. Okay. Um, so as I uh, stated in my talk, I want to uh, uh, talk a little bit about Backbone um, and use that to uh, to only write your models one time and then have the same models in the client and in the server. Um, this can be very useful if you uh, suppose want to make an application where uh, you want to do online collaboration. So work together on a document or anything uh, that is shared. So um, can you try to switch on the light? Just press the light uh, button here. So that works. It just turned on the light on my machine. So I'll show you how that uh, how that works. Is how many of you are uh, familiar with Node.js or anything? <coughs> okay, so quite a quite a few. <coughs> so the Node.js server here is started. So that's fine. Um, I'll take you to the code that's behind this. Um, this is the application that runs on Node.js. Um, it's only a few lines of code, as you see. Um, I'll just go through the code and explain you how these things work. So the first thing we do here is uh, create an Express uh, web server, which is just uh, a Node.js module. Oh, yes. Um, Can you also put off the light from over there? Is it OK now? <coughs> okay, so what you see is I create an app um, that is uh, based on the Express module. That is just a web server module in Node.js. You can uh, just install it by uh, using your Node packet manager. A um, few lines here. First, I tell the web server that anything that has a dot star at the end, so for example, dot uh, PNG, .css or whatever, will just be passed through as a static document. So that way I can serve static documents. Um, next uh, step, I configure um, uh, the Express Web Server to use uh, the Jade engine. Uh, Jade is a template engine. And um, by default, it'll, it will try to find uh, layout.jade. So this is the template that is called layout.jade. It's just another way of writing uh, HTML, uh, much cleaner. Um, and as you see, I just load a bunch of scripts in my client, and I have a few um, divs. In I don't know if you're familiar with J, but this just stands for div classes background, uh, div ID is room, and that's basically it. Um, you just saw the, the, the room, the virtual room. Um, here I create a, a, a global object, rooms. There I will store every room that is being created. So when you go to something else after the slash, you will create a new room in the application. So that happens when uh, this app.get is being uh, called by any client. A request will come. Um, it will take the room ID, which is everything basically behind the slash. Um, and it will create a new room. And you will see here that I will uh, that I made a class which is called room. And um, two things I do: I pass the room ID, and I pass um, an, uh, a reference to the uh, socket IO library, which I loaded. Oops. Here I loaded the socket IO library. Uh, socket IO is a library which takes away every hassle to make uh, WebSocket applications. So you can uh, use it both on the client as on the server. It's very easy, you just import the Socket IO library and you say um, listen to, to a specific uh, uh, port number or uh, uh, web server. And here the app is my web server. So what will happen? Any client that will come will uh, instantiate a new room or if the room already existed then it will just take the existing room and um, it will render uh, an empty page uh, based on the layout. So that's it. So when we go to the web page, uh, I can view the source. It's nothing more than uh, just a, a small piece of uh, HTML. 
Here again, you see that it loads the uh, socket IO JavaScript, and it also loads my uh, post.it.js, what I call it. So let me go to that uh, piece of glasses. Don't um, just take this for granted. Um, here I do some, some little things to have this script work on both the server and the client. Um, so this basically says, well, if we're in uh, Node.js, then uh, um, require the backbone library and uh, the underscore library. Otherwise, it will be uh, loaded through the HTML page itself. So now that here comes the backbone part. Backbone is a very easy library to uh, create models and views in, the, uh, in JavaScript. It takes away um, all the hassle of creating um, how do you say, um, creating objects uh, that are that can uh, connect with each other and also have a view uh, extension on each model. So it's just an MVC kind of pattern, but then in JavaScript. So this, you have to understand that these classes are both run in the server and in the client. So nothing, uh, no double code, it's just the same uh, piece of code. Let me first take you to the room uh, model. What you say is you say backbone.model.extend and you can create your own model which is based on the backbone default model. Uh, basically it takes a few uh, functions. Um, Initialize is the most important one. It's being uh, run every time you create a new model. And um, um, as you saw uh, in the app, I passed the the socket uh, uh, argument. The same we do in the client. So in the client, there's just a small piece of jQuery, document.ready, and create a new room object. And again, we do the same. The only difference here is that we say uh, io.connect, which means connect to the existing socket on the web server. <coughs> so when you uh, come to your initialize method, both on the server or the client, um, this will happen only on the um, server part. So it's still being run on the client, but the client is not getting any uh, connections at, the, at this point. Um, but still it will call the initialize events method for the current socket on, uh, uh, on the client. So let's skip over this really fast. Um, it will, here it will just send some messages to the to the clients like how many clients have been connected so that's the clients connected part so if we take a look here I think I put a number somewhere here's a two so that means that only he and me are connected if I would open up another another tab three clients will be connected I don't know if you see it properly here here's a three um, so how does that work um, whenever a connection takes place on the server, a client is instantiated. The client will send um, first the lights on or lights off method, so that is uh, to tell the, uh, the user that in this room the light is on or off, basically. Um, and it will send the amount of uh, connected clients. Then on the initialize events um, function, I have created all these events. So there is a lights on, there is a lights off, there is a clients connected, and there is a node um, <coughs> event. Well, what happens when we uh, when the, the um, uh, any node comes in? So I made a function here that whenever you double click, you can create a a small message, say hello JS foo. So I don't know if you see it now, but it should have come come true. Yeah. So what? Yeah, he's creating another node here. So what happens is, um, whenever I double click, and that, that is all being taken care of by jQuery in the, the room view. So I have a room view object. Um, Backbone.view.extend, same as a model, but you create a view. Um, it also has an initialize method, and it has an important uh, um, property which is the element so that refers to the current element in your page it can be an existing element but you can also uh, create new elements if you want so what happens here 
uh, some magic, <laughs> but um, basically the double click event on the element um, will tell the uh, the model which is it, it's, it is connected to to set a node and set a node means uh, update the current node or create a new node. So let's go to the set node method. What does this do? Um, first it tries to get the current uh, node if it exists. So suppose there is an ID which is a global identifier that it will just get the current node from that list. If it was not there then it will create a new backbone uh, backbone model, which is called node. It will set the the room property so that from the node you can always access the right room, and then it will add the node to the to the list of nodes. <coughs> um, depending on um, if we uh, told the function to broadcast, it will tell um, the socket to send a message to the server saying, hey, there was a new node. And then there is a very convenient uh, function called toJSON, uh, which just serializes the current object to the JSON format. So then what happens on the server side, um, it's still the same piece of code that's being run on the server side. So the server will get this uh, socket.on node event. And then it will say again, okay, uh, a new node has come, so let's um, parse it and it will again call the function set node. So what I really wanted to explain here is that it is very convenient to write the same piece of JavaScript that runs both on the server, the client or any other uh, client that is connected. So just every time this, the same pattern happens. The on node event is coming in, um, it calls the set node function, so it creates a node in the, in the object on the server and then again because it will broadcast it will again send it to all the clients. Uh, actually, that, that happens here. So I, I have a, an if statement here. If the socket.manager is there, so if this is a server, then broadcast it to everybody that is connected to the current um, uh, server. So that is why when I um, create a node here um, and put some text in here, that is why it now is being uh, sent to the server. The server will instantiate that same node. The only thing the server doesn't do is create a, a view because the server doesn't have views. But on this computer now it will create a, a, a node again. So um, I don't know if you have heard of the framework that is called uh, now.js. Now I didn't take, take time to look into that but they even uh, take away more uh, more features like this, so it, make, it makes it more easy. But I just wanted to explain how the, the socket IO works great with uh, Backbone. Um, we use this in a, in a live application where uh, people work on the same document. Um, whenever they create uh, elements to that document, they will be synchronized. And on the server, of course, you have to take care of um, saving it to a database or anything. That I didn't do in this, uh, in this demo, but that you can do easily also using MongoDB or anything like that. Um, I think I went through it quite quickly, um, so I will give you some time to interact or um, tell me what to explain further on this. Is there any questions? So I thought that the backbone does something already which made sure that uh, the models in the view and the uh, server are, are kept in sync with the index. That, that is true. That is, um, that is true. Uh, backbone by default um, has a very good RESTful API. Um, so if you would connect it to a, a server that is RESTful, uh, then Backbone is also great for making um, standard MVC web applications. But do you have done that off in this case? I haven't done that in this case because here I'm using I'm making use of Socket.io, and uh, that just helps when you want to do um, um, live applications where every event has to be submitted live to the server and back to any other client. But Backbone itself doesn't break if you don't have a RESTful API? No, Backbone, you can you can use it. Uh, Backbone, they have support for uh, for RESTful, but they you can also use it in many other ways because it's very uh, light. It's not that big. And you can use it in whatever, you way, uh, whatever way you want. So that's how you do it. Yeah. Can you please explain a little bit more on uh, socket.io? Because I 
uh, how it is set up, etc. Yeah, um, it's actually very simple. Um, I'll just take the Socket IO website because I think they. Let me see if I can increase this. So here they have a great example of how to use Socket IO. On the server, uh, you say um, require Socket IO library and listen to a certain port. Uh, port. And then whenever you get an event, say connection, um, something will happen. You'll get a, a socket reference. And on the socket, you can say um, emit a message, send a message to the uh, connected client. Yes? Are these connected Yes, yes, they, they will stay for the, for the time that the, the client will be connected. Yeah. But they use WebSockets for it. So the WebSocket protocol, yeah. I even don't know much about it, but it's um, it takes care of all the connection handling. The great thing about Socket.io is that it um, they also have some wrappers for the clients. Uh, even in older browsers, it should work. So if the browsers have Flash support, they will flash, uh, use Flash. Um, I think even IE 5.5 should work. So it's quite convenient. Do you need WebSockets or any other protocol? It's web sockets, but on the older browsers they emulate it, of course, because older browsers don't have support for web sockets. So web sockets is not even a standard yet, because all the browsers are still fighting about which uh, standard they should be on. But most browsers have a, most modern browsers have a socket implementation, web socket implementation. Um, but still, they use different protocols, and the great thing is that Socket IO takes away thinking of that. So on the client. Uh, Client part um, is the same. Um, you connect to, say, localhost, and then whenever a news message comes in, you do something with it. So it's a really convenient way of writing events. So with this, you could easily make a web application, uh, a chat application on, uh, on the web or anything like that. It's a very convenient way to do it. Does Backbone have bindings to any other languages? Um, no, it's pure JavaScript. What do you mean with bindings? Well, some part of the server might not be in Node.js, so how do we get a similar uh, capability? Uh, Backbone, you don't have to run it on the server. Uh, Backbone is uh, basically just a, a, a model, model view controller pattern in JavaScript. So if you use it in Node.js, that is your choice. If you want to use another server, then that's that's cool. But once you want to use JavaScript, then Backbone is a great uh, MVC uh, better. So in this example, you have mixed the events on the server and on the of the client in the same code. Yeah, that's the. I did that on purpose to just show the benefits of Backbone um, in in the sense that you can use the same models when that is needed. Of course, in, um, in in real world applications, you would probably split it up a bit, but, but still, you, you would use the same modules. Could you repeat the question? I didn't hear that clearly. Uh, he was asking if um, um, if there would be any problem if you have uh, the same backbone script on the server and the client in, te in terms of maintenance or support. Um, so I would say that in in most real life applications, you would make classes that would um, uh, would be generic for clients and server. But the, the whole event handling part, probably you would do it differently than how I did it. And that is actually because I really made this uh, quickly and I um, uh, put it every, everything just in one, one file of JavaScript that is being parsed by the server and the, and the client. So what do you think is common? I'm just trying to think. You've got uh, the database persistent part and the view handling and mutually exclusive. Yeah. What, what, what what common is is your models. Yeah, that is actually what I try to explain here. That you can use the same models, um, especially when you use a, a database like Mongo or something. You can store these models directly to the database and use them in the same way on the on the client again. So that is convenient about. Have you benchmarked this in any way? Sorry. Have you benchmarked the number of number of collection increases thus? I have not benchmarked it, but if you read, if you look up the benchmarks by Socket.io, with Node.js you can easily run a, 
a chat application with thousands of users. Just on my MacBook that would work. No problem. Yeah. So in production, when you're actually using this, and you're using the same uh, backbone models, how, how do you uh, you know actually make sure that parts of the models are different and parts of the models are the same? Um, that you could do by just, um, um, we didn't really come up with a pattern for that, but what you can do is um, either have different models for the server and the client and share the, the common models, um, or inside your model you could work with something wherever you check if it's the server or the client, something like that, like I did here with the uh, if socket manager, something like that you could do. But I really did it quickly here, but of course you have to work it out into a, a real world pattern. Yeah? Is the socket connection available when user refreshes the page for the first time? Yes. Is it available when the user refreshes the page? Yes. Whenever the user refreshes the page, it will try to connect to the same um, server, and then everything continues. Because, as you see here, on the initialize, um, um, see basically the initialize events method will, will run. And then again, the, the events will be uh, handled. That will load a new, new connection. So, even data from the same client will be lost. No, the data, of course, the data will be lost when you don't store it on the server. But because everything is being synchronized on the server and all the clients, everything is the same everywhere. So, then we don't have the problem. But of course, when you would have some data in the client that you didn't submit to the server and you would refresh the page, then you lose your data. But that is uh, quite perfect. If the user goes offline and comes back on, uh, does Socket.io make sure that you know, it reconnects as, as soon as possible? Yeah, Socket.io takes care of, of that re reconnecting part and everything. Yeah. So is there any complication with transactional integrity, multiple clients updating the model at the same time? And um, I guess there would be in this in this current example. I think there would be. So you would you you would have to come up with a pattern where you take care of what you're doing because I'm just updating in the, the models, and whoever comes first will update it. And probably if we click together on uh, um, on the light button, something strange will happen. I mean, it's just who comes first. So we can oh, don't double click. <laughs> Since node is invented, there's just one thread, so whoever comes first wins. It's just serialized at node. Yeah, whoever comes first wins. It. Yeah, it's, it's all whoever comes first. If you want to create a pattern for that, then you have to extend it a bit. But I, I think it wouldn't even be too hard. If you, um, In our um, real life ac uh, application, we also handled the sessions, so the current user sessions. And then, of course, you can do some checks on whoever is doing this and uh, is he allowed to do it. And then you can take care of that. So what's the sweet spot for Backbone? The sweet, sweet spot? Uh, the Where back, would you use it more than other, others? Backbone has, has multiple sweet spots. Um, uh, the sweet spot that I wanted to show is that um, it's JavaScript and it runs in Node.js and it runs in the, in the client. But it has uh, many more sweet spots, like, uh, for example, the RESTful integration, which is really great. I could show an ex example of that also, but I don't have much time for that. But um, normally what you can do with that is um, just create your MVC pattern right from one piece of JavaScript. Then on the server part, whatever server it is, you take care of handling each request. And it, you have a, uh, it's just a very nice way of writing uh, models. Uh, let me clarify. So, if you are, the impression I got is if you are having a shared state that yeah. is simultaneously broadcast across number of clients, exactly. then probably this makes a lot of sense. If every client is running, uh, let's say, his own shopping cart, it yeah. may or may not be so useful. So, in that sense, what kind of applications is Backbone more useful for than others? And then, then you would more talk about just regular web applications uh, where you want to. Create in the in the web in the website itself. You want to create a kind of an MVC pattern. Uh, then it is really great also. So it, it's not not said that Backbone has to be used in the in the way I just proposed. So, so just a clarification on that. The shared state. I think you are implementing yourself, right? As a exactly. Person. So Backbone it doesn't have to do with Backbone. Yeah. The shared state implementation is something he has done. Ruben, you also have another 15 minutes if you want to demonstrate something. Um. Yeah, but I don't know if I have to. Uh, no, that would be too uh, too hacky now. So.
if anybody has some questions, we could we could try something. So you have a suggestion, but um, otherwise, I think it's it's quite clear. Um, Can you um, uh, he was asking in the live application what kind of storage we're using. Um, actually, in that application, we're using um, Dropbox. Um, that has to do in this particular application, and they wanted to share documents and work on those documents together. Um, and because these documents have one, um, um, they, they run in the same file format. Um, and also these users of these applications um, would use the file system to access these files. Dropbox was a very convenient method of doing it. But other examples that I've worked with is MongoDB or anything like that. Will this create any kind of issue when uh, we are using an uh, app cache method mechanism for HTML files? So like all my application is cached on my browser side, that is on my mobile device. So when it goes on the mobile device, all my JS and everything is stored on the mobile and it will never go for to the server to get the JS file as well. My HTML and JS will be almost cached at my browser. Okay. So, will this uh, socket.io might create any issue with mobile connection or anything? No. Because the simplest example comes when I need to uh, give an REST API call. If I open an AJAX request, if it is cached on my uh, browser, it will never fire an AJAX request because it's a process scripting kind of. No, oh, if, if you use the RESTful pattern, mm -hmm. that's something different than socket.io. If you use the RESTful pattern, it will do post to the server. So those posts will never be cached right. by, your, by your client. So, so then there wouldn't be any issue. So it may directly go and connect to the yeah. server? Yeah. yeah. It should. Uh, I mean, there might be some issues, but normally it should just work. Yeah. I mean, your, the, 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 the HTML here, the JavaScript, they're static. But everything that's happening is dynamic, and that will be used by posts, or in this case, sockets. And sockets will also never be cached. Yeah, not about sockets will be cached, but will it connect to the server uh, cleanly, just uh, without any hack to be done to it? Yeah, okay. I suppose. I don't see any issue. So that's it. So you mentioned a couple of times about something you did, which is using a Dropbox to share documents and work collaboratively. Is it online? Can we see it? Um, I don't think it is online. Um, no. I could try to uh, run it though. So, I don't know why the font is so strange now. I think it cached something. <coughs> Talking of caching. Anyway, here you see a list of files. These are called BTF files, which is a bow tie format. So this is the kind of document I was talking about. So when I, whenever I open uh, a BTF file, Okay, that's a shame I can show it. Maybe it crashed. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> this is really a local version, so I don't know. Not much chance that I can show it. But normally it would show a diagram. Bowtie, uh, bowtie diagram. A bowtie diagram is something they use in the world of risk management, um, and you would be able to 
edit that diagram uh, lively. Oh, sorry, <laughs> it's crashing. Excuse me, can you repeat? After any other templating engines apart from Jade? Um, no, apart from just HTML. Yeah, I worked with Mustache a little bit, and there are many things. Even Backbone has support for, I think, Mustache um, for the view part. But Jade is very convenient if you use it in uh, collaboration with uh, Node.js and Express web server. Is it Backbone and Socket.io cross-browser compatible? Like um, supported on all? Mostly, mostly. Socket.io um, works uh, in most browsers, and Backbone also. I don't know the exact browser support, but it should work in any modern browser. Okay. Um, thanks. <laughs>